There are very few laws in cinema, but there is one thing that you can count on. Every successful action movie gets a sequel. That is as consistent as gravity. <laughs> Die Hard 2, Die Harder. So Die Hard 2 once again stars John McClane and he is in the shit. The shit this time is that a terrorist organization is taking control of the control tower of an airport. Now the planes have to circle around until they get what they want or the planes lose fuel and just start dropping and everyone dying. And it's up to our man John McClane to stop it from happening. Which sounds like a pretty safe bet, but is it as good as Die Hard? Unanimously everyone says no and I will agree with them. Die Hard 2 is pretty much what I think of when I think of action movie sequel. You look at the sequel and you're like, yeah, they, they made this movie so they would have a sequel to Die Hard. I mean, John McClane's running around doing his John McClane-ish thing, you know, he's taking out baddies, that's what we want to see him do. And the stakes are bigger and everything's bigger, it's in an airport now, which is huge. It's a pre-9-11 world too. You can have cocaine, assault weapons, and hookers around your arm and just, it's all carry on, it doesn't matter. But it also is a shining example showing that bigger isn't always better. I thought Die Hard 1 was so perfect in what it did in terms of hero and villain that the villain in Die Hard 2, he's good, but he's not Hans Gruber, and you don't expect him to be Hans Gruber, but in terms of what Hans Gruber was, which is the exact opposite in every way possible to John McClane, that this guy in Die Hard 2 is just a villain and he's here to do what villains do. There's nothing really special behind the guy. Every movie has its conveniences, and like I said, Die Hard is the epitome of me watching a movie going, yeah, I'll let that convenience slide, I can do that. But when there are so many conveniences just stacked back to back, I finally just go, it's too much. I'm drawing the line in the sand right there, my friends. That scene when John McClane's in the cockpit and all the baddies are just lobbing grenades in there. All right, of any movie that exists, in the history of the world, Die Hard 2 wins the award for grenades with longest fuse. I swear to God, in the history of cinema, before, since, after, doesn't matter, no grenade from pen pulled to explosion has ever taken this long. Watch the scene, it's absurd. This next convenience, it's a bit of a spoiler, so I'm gonna say spoiler. When this goes away, unplug your ears. There's this group that pretty much it's all bullshit. They're like, oh, we're bad guys, but we're posing as good guys. In which case, the actual bad guys and them, who are also bad guys, but you don't know it yet, put blanks into their machine guns in the movie, and they start shooting at each other for a dog and pony show to fool everybody. But who is everybody? I mean, everybody really consists of John McClane and a couple other people. So who is this everybody that they have to put this show on for? And the answer is you, the audience. It's one of those things where they're like, oh, we want a twist in the movie, and these guys are actually going to be bad guys. But we don't know how to make it flow into the movie, but luckily, hey, we don't need it to flow. It's a Die Hard sequel. People are gonna watch it. They might as well just do the Zach Morris, Marty Khan, Deadpool thing. Just turn to the screen and be like, Hi audience, how you doing? We know about you apparently because we're putting all this on for you. If they really had to fool John McClane and a couple other people when they're out in the middle of nowhere at the church, which is what happens, you have the drop on them. They don't know you're bad guys. Just go up behind them, shoot them in the head. Be like, okay, no need for blanks. Solved that problem immediately. Things like this make me overanalyze the movie and just take me out of myself and I, I, I feel like a critic and I hate that shit. Not when it's a die-hard movie because I, then I start feeling bad because I want to like it because it's nostalgic. I remember the oh, die-hard movies. Awesome. Everyone likes die-hard movies, right? Now it's not to say Die Hard 2 is terrible because like I said, it's a popcorn flick action movie and it's not supposed to, you know, be Amadeus, but I would like a movie to actually make sense and flow and when it does it, it's just agitating. So at this point in the review, I have to rate the movie. So do I make the call and go, yeah, it's, it's a good time, no alcohol required because it's a nostalgic movie and it's a popcorn flick not meant to be taken seriously? Or do I actually rate the movie in terms of it being a movie, in which case it's not as good as you want it to be? Then I realize whatever I do rate it, the rating is just one sentence long. It doesn't change the rest of the review. It's all the same. Which is why I have phrase ratings, because I rate the movie how I see the movie. And in the reality of the situation, if I'm being honest, Die Hard 2, Die Harder is a lot of fun fun if you're drunk. Yeah, now it's a party, yippee motherfucker. Drunk or sober, Hans Gruber did say that best. yippee Motherfucker. It's the perfect ambient noise movie. You know, if you need a movie to be on just because you need ambient noise when you work out or play a video game or something, Die Hard 2, Die Hard. Fun movie in that respect, fun movie in that regard, but in terms of the Die Hard movies, it is the bottom one. All right, so in terms of sequel, what is your least favorite sequel? In terms of all sweet movies, sequel. Whatever it may be, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.